What is up, down, and sideways, you beautiful individuals? It is another FPL League Gunlock. Eric and Mark here with you beauties, and we have finally opened the door, entered the arena. It is time for our top 20 players at this year's World Championship. Gotta break it up into two parts today. We are doing 20 to 11, and... As is yearly tradition, it is basically impossible to do these lists. In in any other aspect of this, yes, this is absolutely the most impossible task for the for any type of analysis, any type of prediction in League of Legends is the top 20 players heading to Worlds. You're going to hit a couple of them, are going to make some big plays, make everybody go, that guy had him on his list, that's smart. And every couple of them, they're going to make the whoopsies that go, how is this guy here? What? Let's dive into our top 20. First, a couple honorable spots for the guys just outside. It's a bunch of KT. I'm talking Lahens, Keen, and Aiming. Throw in probably Showmaker in that 21 to 23 type of bubble. Yeah, and, and Showmaker is one of those ones as long uh, alongside the rest of the KT members that you're scared of in a situation of feeling like, okay, if he heats up a little more than we have seen so far this year, he gets himself more invested, more involved, and what's happening in these games, he's a player that can change the shape of what is going on at this event. Showmaker does that get that type of respect, and as well, the rest of the KT members that did succeed so well throughout the whole year, especially this summer split, that whole run throughout the most of it. Of course, there is room to talk about the failure that they did have against T1 at two separate occasions to close this thing out. And that's, I think, one of the bigger reasons why they find themselves on the outside looking in. And on the flip side, why you have guys like T1, guys on T1 making this list, kicking things off with Kyria in that 20 spot. He has not been the MVP consensus best world of the support throughout most of 2023. There's been some up and down moments, but Definitely turned it around in this playoff run, and we saw some game and series-saving plays out of him. What continues to be the thing for Kyria, for sure, at the very least, is a guarantee that he is one of the most creative players in League of Legends, if not one of the most creative supports, and one of the most willing to try and find that secret sauce, that special pick that changes the complexion of the game and how things go. He showed it all the way throughout this year, especially playing those ADCs as that support when that was the meta obviously i don't think that's something that we're really expecting to be something that's going to come into play at this world's event still something to consider that willingness to bring that change bring something out and have that type of play he is certainly someone that uh, i think has benefited greatly from having faker return back to that lineup from t1 ease up some of that pressure some of those things so you can allow him to be creative in game yeah, and focus more on laning and just having an impact on the map as opposed to having to communicate and shot call so much. But another guy who can immediately turn it on for any given day or series and look like one of, if not the best support in the world. The change evolution through playoffs also goes to his buddy in the top lane, Zeus. In at number 19, who I think even more than Kyria, we might see him level up even more after the Asian Games playing alongside somebody like Kanavi. Yes, that is what I am hoping, and that's got to be the rest of the T1 fans to see Zeus get a little bit of a boost from this type of experience at the Asian Games alongside a jungler that has that type of X-Factor ability the way that Kanavi does. Exposure like that is going to be a great thing for Zeus. He has been a player that I think has weathered the storm that was the summer split for T1, uh, you know, a little bit better than most, and certainly someone that since Faker has returned has shown us that form, shown us that dominance in the top side that we know that he is capable of. Look back to last year's Worlds where he stepped in and was able to provide that type of outlet for T1. I think it's going to be even further this year, the type of power that he's going to be able to uh, show to the world on the world stage. And, you know, for the most part, it's been... The potential has always been there for Zeus. We've just criticized. He hasn't reached it, hasn't had the consistency because the highs for this guy are right up there with the three, six, nines and bins of the world in terms of an absolute world-class top laner. Haven't seen it as much in 23 as we did in 2022, but again, no reason to think he can't get back to that on the international stage. 
Less high on a lot of BLG members after they bottomed out in the summer split, but absolutely still putting the respect on what they did in spring, MSI, and the summer regular season. A guy like On is so often slept on on this BLG lineup. And I think that it's criminal that he has slept on for this BLG lineup because you're talking about him. You're talking about one of the best recons that we have seen this year. Someone who was fully able to get that engage popping off for his team, be that type of player and make sure he's coming back. doesn't matter how much health he's got. He's still not in that gray screen simulator on doing a fantastic job on that dip and diving champion. And he really was kind of that glue that kept things together for this BLG team and made it so that you could have these type of explosions, these type of power, consistent power that we saw from them throughout this summer split. And there's a reason people wanted to pair him beside Elk on this Asian Games roster for the uh, Chinese team other than Mako because obviously he had that built-in synergy and On has been, you know, that good throughout his entire installment on this BLG squad. Three out of four T1 members we're talking about in this first list to kick things off. And we get to the guy who was begging, pleading for Faker to come back the most and was the happiest to see him return. Because even during that terrible slump for T1, the Guma God was trying his absolute damnedest to drag T1 across the finish line. Oh, man. And if you had any doubts about the potential, the type of star power that someone like Gumayushi is going to bring to the table as his career continues to develop, this was a great assurance for a lot of people to see that type of performance, see that come through, even with the struggles of T1, to see Guma take that step. It's a fantastic thing because when you look at this T1 lineup and all the young players, I think a lot of that attention shifted towards Zeus last year. Of course, this year in the early parts with all the creativity and changes going in the bottom lane, still the focus was on Kyria and what he's playing. Now it has shifted fully back to Guma to realize that yes, Baker might be that unkillable demon king and we love him for that. And Zeus has got that thrills in the top side. But your boy Guma is that rock. He is that heart for this T1 team that is going to keep you beaten, keep you doing that damage, and keep you in these big games against some of the best teams in the world. And mechanically, yeah, you're absolutely still talking about him as one of the most gifted AD carries, not just in the LCK, but worldwide. Love to compare him to maybe Jackie Love in the LPL because there are some team fights where Guma gets a little uh, too hypey, <laughs> a little too forward. But when he plays team fights cleanly, absolute treat to watch yeah, eh, not quite to the jackie love type no, no of one can reach that Guma. level fully but him but he is not excused from the question mark ping that still comes out every now and then but it has been clean from guma this is one of those players as you mentioned mechanically extremely gifted lucian creeps into the meta you better watch yourself out guma's gonna be ripping through you with those guns first mid laner on this list it's a guy who's been on it before but not for a long time enjoying a certain renaissance resurgence of his career is bdd finding his second wind on his second stint with kt rolster and despite losing back-to-back -back series more than held his own against faker and was right up there you know his other kt hit members just hanging out outside of that top 20 but bdd deserving a nod if you turn back that clock, you go back to those series, both of them against T1, and you look at the ways, the avenues, the ones that uh, KT is able to win in those series, a large part of that is built off of advantages, wins built out from BDD's lane and what he was getting on and how he was able to be a difference to Faker in lane was a major part of why that series was even able to go to that silver scrapes, go those distances that it did, BDD. What a return year for him for this KT lineup, really returning to that spotlight in the LCK to operate at this type of level of a mid laner. We all know it, the Azir is the classic, of course. That is one of the best, smoothest Azirs that we have seen in the world, but you slide in for me right now, that Tristana, that one is the difference maker for me with what is going on with BDD this year. That type of damage, that type of aggressiveness that that champion builds into playing in the mid lane, BDD was capitalizing fully this year. And I think something we sleep on with BDD is he's actually willing to play some of these kind of 
off the meta pocket picks and has been throughout his career. We've seen him getting solo kills on Vigar. We've seen him pull out Velkaz and Zareth. He's my sleeper Zareth pick to take over some of these tournament games. Ooh, I'd love to see a Zareth pop off at Worlds. And as you mentioned, that Vigar, that is one of those nasty Vigars that you see there out there on the rift that kind of annoys you a little bit early. And then late game, you're raging because you're getting deleted with one butt. Only 1,200 AP, you know, in that late game. But always you can tell the good Vigars by how many cages they're landed instantly. I'm not saying stuck in the cage, running in circles, but getting stunned into instantly getting you on the corners. That's the tricky part to do with Vigar. Just ahead of BDD, who he held lane against. And I'm saying it, the hardest guy to rank on this list is the GOAT. It's Faker, because if you're looking specifically only at the individual mid lane performance out of Faker, maybe it's not even top 20 worthy, but when you include solely how bad T1 looked without him, I, I feel like it would be a tragedy not to be putting him on this list and as the most important member of T1. It's all going to be what you're valuing, what you are putting the prize points on for a player and, and how you're accumulating those and how you're stacking it up against the other when you're coming to someone like Faker and what he can bring, what he can offer, what history he has laid down before to give you this type of confidence in talking about him. Right now with Faker, we're taking the conservative approach, looking at what he has offered in this return, of course keeping things cautious with his with the health of that hand and that arm making sure that we are doing well for him all those things important and when we cut straight to the gameplay and cut through all that bs and we get to talking about what faker did pretty darn good in that return looking like the faker that we talk about making those contributions of course you add in an astronomical value of that shot calling decisiveness that comes through the global taunt all these things that we bring in with faker you then look at a bit about that individual play. We just talked about BDD and how BDD was able to take him to task in those series. That's something where I think that individual level for someone like Faker heading towards this world's event, not quite at 100%. We can ramp up to there. We can rev up to there. Are we going to get there with the Asian games? Are you going to get there at the start of the event? Who knows? That's going to be the, the thing that we're going to all wait and find out with Faker. And, you know, it, it's, it sounds like he's been getting embarrassed across the map the way we're talking about things. But how many highlights have we had of him outplaying 1v3 escapes and some insane engages? So he is still absolutely top tier uh, when it comes to, especially outside of laning. But you, you get behind a bit in laning. It happens. Yeah. Yeah. And especially, I mean, you know, you're talking about some of the very best of the best that we are going to also lay out further on later in this list that you're laning against. And that's yep. part of that reason. The other thing to, of course, keep in mind is, yes, this is going off of what has been the return of Faker from this injury. If you want to slice things up even before that injury and look at this year still, you're seeing great contributions from Faker. Really, the type of stuff we were talking about early in spring rejuvenated faker playing with these young players playing with that type of confidence and fun in that mid lane that's the type of faker that i think that will start to creep in start to influence and start to turn things up for mr faker right now with t1 ahead of the goat is another forgotten member of a championship team and the mvp whenever he's locked in some Alistair matches in these playoffs. Gen G Delight. And one quick thing to note on him, whenever you're highlighting a rookie AD carry having an incredible year, and Hayes has had an absolutely historic year, but implementing a rookie into the lineup, you got to give some credit to the support that's helping alongside him as well. And I don't think Delight's been getting enough, uh, you know, shout outs and support over the years. And unfortunately, that just happens when it is the rookie ADC stepping in, replacing arguably the best ADC in for a current form right now and has no skip beats. My man making sure all that damage is there. And who's keeping him alive? Who's setting him up for all those plays? Yes, sir. You better believe it is Mr. Delight in that bottom lane. The Alistar specialist. Do not let him get any cowbells near you because you better believe that is going to be a quick trip to the fountain for you and a quick dance for Mr. Gen G Delight. He has been on point with his engages alongside Peanut, taken over games and has really, I think, leveled up from summer 
to spring even, or from spring to summer, he's been at another level where his pace has been Mr. Consistent. But yeah, the engaging alongside him and Peanut Delight, I mean, I think has reached levels that people wouldn't have expected when this was initially announced as a signing coming over from Freddie Brion. But Delight has absolutely more than filled the shoes left behind by Lahens on this roster. 13, unlucky on this list, some would say. But uh, he's only unlucky when he matches up against Ruler. Because <laughs> BLG Elk has embarrassed everyone else he's matched up against this year, except for those two playoff series. But for the most part, one of the most exciting Premier LPL ADCs to watch this whole year. Oh, yes. This has been one of the most thrilling players throughout this year and really one that I'm personally so excited to get to talk about because so many people like myself have seen this potential, seen this brewing for this player and just waiting for that type of breakout this year. We finally get it with Elk storming through the LPL and establishing himself as one of the top tier options at that all coveted ADC role in the LPL, really delivering. We already talked about what he did alongside on how he has supported him. You gotta be looking really with Elk and the damage that he has been doing, the type of champions he's been playing all the way through, of course, very meta. And all the way through, he has kept it clean for your boy. He has been the last line of defense for BLG. Whether it's on going off roaming, leaving him in a 1v2, sometimes 1v3 scenario where he scavenges a kill or doesn't end up dying. And then in team fights, when guys like Ben and Jun get a little lost in the sauce, old reliable Elk is sitting in the back line just waiting to clean up for his Penta. And you've seen it. You've seen it with the Zaya, the Aphelios, dialed me up some Zeri, whatever it is. He has taken full advantage of what have been those current meta ADCs. I think if you're looking for maybe a little something out there that could creep in, could be something different if we are seeing these ADC bands pour in, look at that Ash, the classic champion that you're talking about. This is what he has done on it. Perfect. Four games, four wins for your boy. Keep that one in mind if we start seeing these bands coming through because you better believe other teams are going to take notice of this rise to stardom that Elk has established for himself this year. Yeah, Jinx, Zaya, Aphelios, Kaisa, all picks that he has excelled on, all ones that are dominating the meta right now. Number 12 on this list is another interesting one, and it is the first, and I assure you, it's not the only member of JDG. It's missing, and he's a bit of a mystery because you see people not flame him, but basically just, wow, you're getting carried by an absolutely stacked JDG roster. But guys, come on. This dude is more than holding his own on this super team roster and is playing his own role in Ruler having a historic year. I genuinely don't know what games you're watching if you're not able to talk about missing with JDG. Yes. There's so much going on with JDG that you got to talk about, but you better be making sure that a couple of those bullet points are your boy missing and what is going on for him. His contribution, undoubted, with this JDG team. He has been a big part of setting things up for all these players to knock down. They're looking through the champions. They're trying to find what is fantastic from him. I really do like what I've been seeing from the Thresh and the Renata are two interesting ones, I think, from him that I have seen really show that difference level, really be something that is imp you know oppressive to deal with. That Renata, with Ruler being the one getting buffed up by it, that's a problem, man. And I think Renata is kind of a low key. You have to actually be able to play well. How many times have you seen Renata's not have very much impact? The ulti's a little slow, can be difficult to get solid, engages. Yeah, missing in Kyria, I think the two standout Renata players that we have in the current meta. But there's all parts of this JDG lineup are firing on all cylinders. And you don't look this good if there's any weak link anybody getting carried so missing is not just there hop, hanging on to coattails he is adding to this historic year from jdg 11 and final one on this first part we're gonna break it up into two parts this is just part one top 20 players but we end things off with lng gala who found his peak form of the entire year at the perfect time in this playoff run for lng it's like he heard the call he heard the bell oh, Kaisa's meta? Kaisa's OP? Okay, hold on, let me log on. 
Oh, baby. Gala, gala, gala. Yes, could not be a list like this without his appearance. And I was worried we might not be getting to see him on a list like this at some point this year. Yes, even at the point of making that move over to LNG, I had my doubts. I think a lot of people did, especially in those first couple of weeks where Gala steps into the lineup. Yes, you're going, this is it. RNG Gala. We're going to get a premier ADC on this LNG team. This is going to be what's pushing them to that next tier. And it didn't quite happen right away. A couple of weeks go by, but you're checking in with us now and you're checking in after the LPL playoffs and after that LPL gauntlet. And yes, Suri, Gala is back. Gala's in business. And this is the Gala that has been taking down names at the world championship before different jersey dial it up the same for you boy yeah, it's perfect it's peak rng msi gala that we're seeing heading into form uh, in this world championship with the other lng players also stepping up in a big way obviously a lot of t1 members in this first half of the top 20 and you know sorry to owner i'm gonna spoil it he's he's not in the top 10 so uh, <laughs> that was the end of the t1 run i'm gonna i'm gonna wager i think even owner uh, it's kind of saw that one coming probably with this one. But yeah, you have, of course, uh, the majority of T1 finding themselves in this early part of the of the list. This is certainly one that is a consequence of that slump throughout the summer. Why we're not as high on them as we have been in the past, but still totally open room here. And I think that if this is it, this is the opening top 10 to the, uh, to the top 20 of this list. Oh boy, we've got some great players to talk about still. And listen, we've got Delight, we've got Missing, the two supports from the champions from the LCK and LPL. I'm going to tell you right now, <laughs> there's some more JDG and Gen G members waiting in that top 10. Uh, absolute shocker. Can't believe it. No way we'd have these two. Absolutely. Bet on it. JDG, Gen G dominance. And we're so confident that the Golden Guardians are going to win against BDS. We've already put Licorice in the top five, where he rightfully belongs, Mark. Hey, man, top five Canadians. Hey, let's roll with that top one. Top one. Hey, let's Maybe go. Jo Bless it up. Jojo Pion's Canadian, so take that back. Jo oh, he's going with C uh, that, that, That's the leak right there, C9 Jojo I, I, You heard it I'm not. First. I'm not going to confirm or deny, but I will say that's it today for League <laughs> Unlock. Erica Mark here with you, beauties. Thanks for watching, as always, and we'll catch you on the flippity flip.